Hello, I'm Rob Martinez. This is New Mexico History in 10 Minutes. Let's talk New Mexico history. Today I want to talk about our Spanish, our language that is brought to New Mexico in the 1500s. Before I talk about Spanish though, let's remember that the Native American communities in New Mexico, the Puebloan people, and other groups that will come in like the Comanche, Apache, Navajo, the Hopi, um, they have their own languages. They're multilingual, multicultural, and very diverse. So they're here first for centuries, even thousands of years. Now, the Spanish language essentially comes from the vulgar Latin of the Roman Empire. Vulgar sounds kind of weird, right? It doesn't mean what we think it means. It just means uh, the Latin of the people, uh, the people on the street or the people who work the fields. It wasn't the high Latin of the Catholic Church or the Roman government. It was how people spoke at a street level. It starts to really evolve into Spanish in the 1200s, just like all the Romance languages, Italian, uh, French, uh, Portuguese, it starts to come into its own in the 1200s. So that's when we start to see uh, writings in the vernacular, like Dante writing his, uh, his poetry in Italy, what will become Italy. Um, it's the language of the street, it's the local language. And you see this uh, all over the Roman Empire. St. Jerome's uh, Vulgate, the, the uh, Bible uh, translated from the Greek into the Latin. You know, the Greeks looked at Latin as barbaric and uh, on the edge of the world. Well, that eventually becomes uh, the common language of the Roman Empire, including Spain, Portugal, the Iberian Peninsula. So the language starts to evolve uh, through the centuries and in the 1200s really starts to come into its own as Castellano, Castilian. So it's also a, a language that is blending uh, with other cultures. Let's remember the Moors, the Muslims were in Spain for 700 years from about 711 until 1492. They impact Spain in a lot of ways. Spanish is... a uh, partly Arabic, uh, words like almohada, alfombra, uh, pillow, or uh, rug, or um, Guadalquivir, Guadalupe, Guadalajara. These are Arabic words. Medina means town. So uh, the Spanish language is not strictly European. Um, it's not strictly Roman. It's going to have elements from around the Mediterranean world because that's the world that the Romans dominated and that Spain was part of for centuries. So think about that. It's an ever-changing language that's part of an ever-changing culture. So by the 1500s, when Spain starts to conquer uh, a good part of the world, when the Spanish start to come to the Americas, this is the language they're bringing and they bring it to Mexico. Well, in Mexico, Spanish uh, encounters the Native American languages of that area, Nahuatl, and all the different uh, languages of the diverse groups of Native Americans that are there. So it, it percolates and cooks and becomes something unique in Mexico in the 1500s and 1600s. So the people that come to New Mexico to colonize starting in 1598 and into the 1600s, they're bringing a Spanish that has roots in Spain, but also in Mexico. There are words that are part of the language that become part of our language. Uh, the Nahuatl words, Aztec words like um, uh, tecolote, owl, tomate, tomato, chocolate, chocolate, atole. These words are brought to New Mexico. So we need to remember that when the Oñate colonists come in 1598 and into the 1600s, they're not speaking a purely Iberian language. They're speaking Spanish that is part Iberian and part American. So when we get into the 1700s, we need to remember that this Spanish is passed down from generation to generation. But each generation has Spanish ancestors and Native American ancestors. 
add Puebloan people who were learning Spanish and pronouncing it than the Genizaro servant slave class of Comanche people, uh, Navajo, Apache, Hopi, uh, Kiowa, um, Ute. They are speaking this Spanish, but they're adding their accents, their uh, worldview. And it's really starting to evolve and develop in the 1700s, this unique way of speaking Spanish in New Mexico that is a combination of all these peoples. There are also African contributions that probably would be hard to pinpoint. Nevertheless, people from Africa and the Caribbean are coming to Mexico. They're blending with Spanish people and uh, native Mexican people. And they're bringing their pronunciation and certain words. And it all comes together in New Mexico by the late 1700s and into the 1800s. Now, keep in mind... Our Spanish has all kinds of elements. It has archaic elements. Uh, words like truje instead of traje, meaning I brought. Or asina instead of asi. Uh, azucara instead of azucar. Uh, these are uh, archaic words that can be found uh, not only in New Mexico, but in rural parts of Spain, Mexico, South America, and other parts of the speaking uh Spanish-speaking world where uh, people have been isolated or far away from centers of education where Spanish has been evolving over the centuries. But let's be very clear. Our Spanish in New Mexico has been evolving over the centuries as well. It's become a unique way of speaking that some people from place, places like Mexico or Spain or South America or the Philippines, they might hear us speak Spanish and think they speak kind of strange. There's a there's a certain accent. We have a Spanish accent, but there's Native American accent thrown in there. It's a blend. It's an amazing combination of all of our history. Now, let's remember, we also became part of the United States starting around 1850. So we're still speaking Spanish here, um, but... There are English words being introduced, English pronunciation. We stopped being part of the Spanish-speaking wor world officially. So as the modern world evolves and develops, uh, there are words that have to be created to describe things like airplanes, cars, trucks. So, you know, we say uh, in Spanish, uh, modern Spanish, that airplane is an avión. But in English, it's an airplane. So we have what we call inglesismos, English words that are turned into Spanish words. We say aeroplano, airplane. Um, uh, brakes on a car, brecas. Uh, a truck, troca. Uh, modern Spanish, it's a camioneta. Uh, a car, carro. Well, it's coche in modern Spanish. Um, I, the example I always uh, love is that... Um, uh, in modern Spanish, to drive a car is to conducir, conducir. But in New Mexico, we say arriar. That's an old word to drive a team of horses or, or oxen or other animals. So this is uh, the, the, the interesting, uh, twisty way that we've uh, evolved our Spanish. It's very unique. Uh, uh, we, we also have words that have been twisted uh, like... Um, uh, Pader for wall instead of pared. Uh, the word for city is ciudad. But in New Mexico, some of us say suidad. The words get switched around and twisted in a very interesting way. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about that uh, just to give you some food for thought. Um, it's not taking away anything from our unique Spanish roots. We have those uh, roots in Spain with our language, but they are filtered through Mexico uh, for centuries, for generations, and then brought up here to New Mexico in the 1600s and 1700s. They're further uh, mixed with uh, Puebloan and Genizaro Indian pronunciation and uh, vocabulary, and then further influenced by our uh, 
period, as Americans. We're Americans now. We speak English, but, you know, we also have code switching where we say, vamos al show. Let's go to the show. Let's go to the movies. Uh, Dame un beer. Give me a beer. Let, can you bring me a beer? We, we, we code switch from Spanish to English, English to Spanish. Uh, I've seen my relatives and heard them do that many times. So that's it for now. Just some food for thought. Um, I'll see you later and we'll talk more about New Mexico history. Adios. Goodbye.